Good evening. Um, my name is Joey Lundquist. I am the project manager for Ramsey County for the South Shore Boulevard Trail. Um, this is our online open house for May 26, 2021. Um, we are reconstructing South Shore Boulevard from White Bear Avenue to East County Line Road. Um, and adding a trail on the north side of the road. Um, west of McKnight Road, the, the road will be two lane with the trail and east of McKnight, it will be one, one way going toward the east. Um, we could go on to the next slide. Um, the meeting purpose is for us to share details of final design and receive public feedback. There is an opportunity also for you to learn details about final design and provide your comments. What do you think the county should be mindful of during this final design stage? Our presentation will be 30 minutes long or in that vicinity and we have um, at least 30 minutes for question and answer. Um, the process will be that you submit questions in the chat Q&A and we will respond to them verbally after the presentation. Um, our project stakeholders, the people that we've been working with on this project include myself with Ramsey County, John Mazzatello with Ramsey County. He's the director of um, program delivery. Um, Jim Studensky with White Bear Township is here. Uh, Paul Kalpi is the White Bear Lake engineer. I'm not sure he's on tonight. Andrew Giesen is representing Washington County. He's online tonight. Greg Brown is the Kimley Horn project manager. He's also online and will help me present tonight. Uh, Andy Ganyu is with Birchwood Village and Greg Bartz is with Lake Links and he's also a, um, a, a resident adjacent to the project. Hi, uh, I'm Greg. As Joey said, I'll be assisting with the presentation tonight. I'm with Kimberly Horn. I'm a civil engineer and I'm working on uh, developing the final plans for the project in conjunction with Ramsey County. A big part of the purpose of the meeting tonight is to get your feedback on the design. We're just in the early stage of the final design period. I know for some of you this project is, has gone on for years. The discussions have gone on for years, but the end is in sight. We're getting very close to uh, having a final set of plans in 2021, which will facilitate construction next year. So one of the things we want to make sure you're able to do is ask questions as a part of this presentation. So if you're on the web version of the presentation, you should be able to, to click the, the button in the lower right corner of the window. If you're in the mobile version, there's a button in the upper right side of the window. And those questions will get loaded into our system and we'll be uh, sorting. There's other people here behind the scene that will kind of help organize those. You can certainly ask questions during the presentation, but we will hold uh, to the end to, to respond to those. This is also being recorded. So that will be on the web after the fact or after the meeting and questions that we maybe don't get to just for time's sake or uh, that we that we need to find a, a research and answer, if you will, uh, we'll follow up later on the web or uh, with you individually. So here is the project location. The South Shore Boulevard Trail is on the southwest corner of the lake. Um, existing trail around White Bear Lake is is along the um, north and west portion of the lake on Lake Avenue. Um, and there are plans, studies for, uh, for the trail on the east side of the lake. Um, but this is this tonight is focused on South Shore Boulevard and Lake Links uh, Association is trying to complete this trail around the lake and so that you would be able to easily ride a bike or walk or whatever you want to do along the along the trail. Um, but this this would complete the most of the trail within Ramsey County, although I think there's a little portion up on 96 that isn't completed yet. Uh, 
Um, existing conditions, the, the, the lane widths, it's presently a two lane road with 12 foot lanes <clears throat> and four foot shoulders. And um, presently bikes and pads either walk on the show, walk or ride on the shoulder or they bikes sometimes take over the lane. <clears throat> Um, some of the things that we consider in final design are the character of the road, how, how the design affects the appearance and feel of the corridor, the circulation, how design changes driving routes and access, the trail experience, how design affects the experience for pedestrians and bicyclists, safety, how design would impact safety for all users, vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians, Services, how design would impact mail and package delivery, school bus routes, emergency services, and trash pickup. Maintenance, how design will impact roadway and trail maintenance, grass mowing, snow plowing, and snow removal. Um, cost of proposed improvements. We try to evaluate the feasibility of estimated construction cost versus the need for the improvement. Um, on-street parking, how design impacts on-street parking. City utility improvements, um, we are replacing, um, White Bear Lake and White Bear Township are replacing portions of the water main and sanitary sewer in the project area and street lighting. So uh, many of you probably participated in an open house about a year ago. Uh, and then there was also some engagement, maybe a couple years before that, I believe. But uh, just a, a recap of some of the things we heard at the open house last year, which was pretty much consistent with the earlier uh, conversations that we've had with the community. Uh, there was quite a bit of response, a, a very robust feedback, both in terms of the open house as well as uh, just uh, write in votes or, or write in comments, et cetera. Uh, over a period of a few weeks last year. For the most part, uh, there was strong preference for a hybrid or one way and or one way. So the hybrid option was partial two way, partial one way. Uh, as you can see in these pie charts, uh, on uh, the left, the hybrid was 48%, one way was 31%. On the wiki map responses that we received, almost 100% was either one way or hybrid. And what you'll see tonight here in a, in a couple minutes is essentially the manifestation of that, we're, we're doing a hybrid option with a one way from McKnight East and a hybrid from uh, White Bear to McKnight, as, as Joey mentioned at the kickoff of the meeting. Uh, slide. So another thing that we uh, asked for feedback on last year was, what are the things that are most important to the community? And this uh, kind of illustrates those rankings. So on the left, you can see that safety improvements was a big factor and I think that that essentially is walkers and bikers that are using the corridor today and don't really have a, a dedicated space. You're mixing with traffic. It doesn't feel safe and that's a really a big, if not the primary focus of this project to, to provide a safe route for that. Uh, the second and third are bike and pet experiences. Uh, you're just trying to improve that that whole uh, experience as you're going along the corridor from what it is today. And as, as we go down, we also asked about impacts to services, aesthetics, limiting property inter impacts. All those things are things we're going to consider and are important, but uh, the safety and that uh, the bike pet experience were generally the, the higher ranked in level of importance, but it doesn't mean we don't consider everything. Sure, slide. Uh, so comment themes as, as I said, uh, I think trail, the, the fact that uh, there should be a trail is pretty pretty unanimous as far as things go in, uh, in these types of uh, discussions. Nothing is ever 100% unanimous, but it's very strong support for the need of a trail. Also, we've heard a lot about getting the project done sooner than later. And as I mentioned, I know there's been discussion of this. I think it maybe started initially over 20 years ago as far as visioning of it. So um, we're, we're almost there, trust us. <laughs> we just got a little further to go, but we're getting there. Uh, and I know there's, there'll be a lot of use of this when, when it does get 
uh, constructed and limiting property impacts and costs. And part of a big part of the design that you'll see and, and that we talked about in the past as well is, is, is exactly that. We're trying to keep the footprint of the new project, the trail and the roadway, as close to the existing roadway footprint. And the, the real primary driver of that is to keep the impacts to private properties uh, as low as possible or as little as possible. That also kind of translates to cost as well, keeps costs generally in, in uh, reasonable uh, range. Part of the every everyday design that we do or design thinking is includes maintenance and drainage and we know South Shore has its share of drainage issues. Uh, a number of you have weighed in over the years about your properties and, and we have a list of properties that we're aware of that have drainage issues. We, we would like to solicit that further tonight. If there's anyone, even if you've spoken up before, don't uh, feel free to to let us know that you've got a, a drainage concern, maybe there's nuisance flooding and a, and a big rainfall, et cetera. We'll, we'll make sure as we work on the details of the design that we address that and try to remedy that. So the final product is not just a trail and a one-way road or a hybrid roadway. It's, it's really kind of a holistic approach to, to the corridor and, and in dealing with drainage and some of the maintenance issues that have been a kind of a thorn in the county side over the years. So, these next two slides, or this, this next slide, I should say, has two cross sections on it, typical sections. Uh, the, the top section is the one-way uh, section. This essentially exists from McKnight to County Road F. So there'll be a one through lane, an 11 foot wide through lane. As Joey mentioned early on, the current lane from the white stripe to the center, double yellow is 12. So we're narrowing that up a foot. We do have a shoulder to the right of that, generally six feet. And then we'd have a couple feet of kind of graded level space. It would probably be an aggregate type of surface. And then it will go down, either down or up to the adjacent yards or a ditch uh, to the right. On the left of the section is something that's essentially kind of a new element for South Shore. It's a curb that we're gonna install on the left side of the roadway, the north side, and that's gonna kind of delineate the space from the roadway to the pedestrian and bike area. So you see in the exhibit, we have some a green uh, rectangle there that represents a boulevard that will be essentially turf boulevard. And then next to that is a 10 foot trail. And again, another kind of level graded area, then a blending down to the existing property. Sometimes it's down, sometimes it's up. So that's the, the one way typical section. The two-way section is really essentially the same from a from the perspective of the trail and the boulevard, uh, with the exception that there's two lanes of traffic. So here we have two 10-foot lanes of traffic and a shoulder on the right side of the, the roadway. Now these are typical sections, and by definition, that means that won't won't necessarily apply everywhere. There are locations where we might be constrained for space, whether that's due to private landscaping or a significant tree or driveways or other kind of physical factors and we might need to bring the trail in or or make some other minor adjustments to these sections in order to best fit uh, the the proposed improvements in the space that we have available the last point I'll make on on these before we can kind of walk through the corridor is the existing roadway it's, it may be a little bit difficult to see there but it's 32 feet so there's a dimension line that's uh, just below the top dimension line so you can see on the one-way option our our proposed footprint is about 35 feet so we're just a little bit wider than the existing footprint so that and that's intentional to kind of keep our limits as uh, comparable or impacts or grading as, as limited as possible on the sides, which translates to low or minimal impacts to any private private property areas or even public area between the road and the private property line. On the lower exhibit, the lower section, which is the two way from McKnight to White Bear Avenue, you'll see the proposed footprint is 42 feet as compared to the 32. So we're 10 feet wider. Now, the nature of that part of the corridor, as you all know, I'm sure, is a little bit more flat. It's a little more uh, straight. So that that expansion fits a little bit better. If we were to apply that two-way section all the way through the corridor, we'd have a lot of uh, significant grading impacts, probably retaining walls and drive significant driveway impacts 
Easton McKnight. That's really the primary driver between the hybrid approach, the two-way and the one-way. Where the two-way fits on the west end, we're applying it, but to the east, we we really uh, uh, are leaning the one way because of the the desire to limit those impacts, and that's been, you know, I think uh, echoed in meetings to date, and I think generally people have responded to that or understand that. But that's really the motivation between the two sections. So now we'll walk through the the corridor, and this will all be on online, and you'll be able to to see this. So we won't. I know you can't necessarily see all the details, but we'll wor work our way from west to east, just pointing out some some things for your interest. So the west end of the project, the trail will connect to the existing trail that's along Old White Bear Avenue that connects you to Marina Triangle area. So you'll be able to essentially bike or walk along the whole corridor and go up to that uh, the Marina Triangle area and, and keep going around the lake, you know, for that matter, if, you, if you'd like to do that. We're also going to have a connection that goes to White Bear Avenue, crosses White Bear Avenue and ties into the trail on the far side of White Bear Avenue that's uh, along Goose Lake. So you kind of see that uh, there on the left side of the image. Uh, a point I'll make, I won't necessarily bring it up at each intersection, but as a rule, when we have side streets, for example, Hazel Street here right in the beginning, uh, we'll generally have new crosswalks or head ramps, the slope ramps that allow wheels, wheelchairs, anything that's rolling or uh, people that just aren't comfortable, you know, walking over curbs to access or across the street. Some might have a higher uh, degree of, of treatment with signage or markings than others, but we will always be looking to, to make those connections into the neighborhood to the south. So people coming from the south on, this, on the local streets can get to the main trail on the north side of the street. So the next slide takes us just a little bit further down kind of shows us that two lane section from White Bear Avenue to McKnight Road. Uh, generally our you know our road and trail all fit nicely within the right of way. We will be reconstructing driveways along the way both north side and south side just to the point where we need to match into your existing driveway grades. The process that we're in right now is kind of a, a detailed look at the topographical nature of the corridor and try to blend the proposed surface of the road and the driveways with your existing uh, driveways and, and your yards for that matter. But the driveways are the, the most um, detailed look that we need to do because of the constraints on, on how you grade driveways out. I, the other point I'd make on this particular section, the two-way section is the center of the roadway itself, the center of the two lanes is a little bit south of the current center line. And we did that to balance the new footprint. You might Remember, I mentioned this footprint is 42 feet wide versus 32. So in order to keep the impacts uh, as balanced from north side to south side, we shifted the center line of the road just a little bit south. So the edge of the trail and the edge of the south side of the road are kind of comparably wider than the existing. And we're, we're always looking at existing trees. It's an important part of the character of the corridor. So for the most part, we're uh, uh, avoiding those trees and as I mentioned we might make some adjustments to the trail or other things in order to avoid significant trees along the way. So the next slide uh, keeps we kind of keep marching our way east. This focuses a little bit on the McKnight Road intersection. So here we transition from two-way on the left side of McKnight Road to a single uh, one-way direction on the east side of McKnight Road and we are we're proposing that that be an eastbound movement. Uh, that's some that's an element that uh, had some discussion to date uh, in the in the intervening time between last May and currently we uh, are proposing the eastbound and that's for a number of reasons. Uh, it's uh, a little it performs a little better from an emergency vehicle response time the, based on this, the location of the fire department and, and first responders. It works much better for maintenance operations, snow clearing, etc. Uh, it there's kind of trade-offs east and west relative to going up hills and down hills, uh, but this has some benefits on the east end of going up up the hill that's relatively steep as compared to going down. But we understand there's there's kind of pros and cons on, on some of those perceptions or per perspectives. But uh, with all things considered, we feel the one way eastbound is our the best ultimate uh, solution. 
Uh, as I mentioned, uh, connection here in McKnight Road, for example, will be connecting to the, the bike lanes there, allowing people to cross, uh, whether you're walking or biking, to get to the trail. So the next slide moves us east along the one-way section. This is, of course, a little zoomed out, but this is essentially from McKnight to Bel Air. Uh, and we've narrowed the section down with the one-way. So our footprint is generally the same as the existing roadway, generally about 32 to 35 feet. So we're, we're fitting fairly nicely in the existing uh, edge of asphalt. Now, with that said, we're looking at driveways and other things that we might make some slight adjustments to the alignment to try to still best fit and minimize any uh, minor grading impacts. But things will generally exist within that, exi that uh, current footprint. Uh, you know, a big, a big uh, benefit of this trail is the spots where you can see the like, just like at Marina Triangle, so we'll be looking a little closer there where the trail uh, comes along the shoreline. Uh, clearly, you'll be able to see the light just by nature, but we might take some opportunity to meander the trail a little bit further from the roadway if there's space within the right of way and grading allows just to create a, a little bit uh, more pleasant experience. But that will be one of the real um, benefits of the trail from just a, a user experience, something that would be pleasant to to see and maybe maybe even pause at you know uh, there was some comments and we'd like to solicit comments on you know is there a desire to have a bench or anything and some of those things could be considered whether they're in this project or their follow-on improvements done uh, but it's something that we'd like to hear hear uh, people's thoughts on we've also added a little bit of parking on the north side in these areas where we know there's a lot of parking pressure today like in the dock area so that's something we're trying to balance too that adds a little bit of footprint to the overall roadway, but we know that there's probably a little more pressure to, to have some parking in those areas than in some of the other parts of the corridor. So the next stop on our tour is the Bel Air intersection. So here, of course, we have the, the park to the north. Uh, again, you can kind of see here, I apologize, I know it's hard to see at the scale, but we've added a little bit of more, a little bit more parking on the north side of the corridor here, again, to address the, the needs at the park, uh, in addition to some existing parking that, it, that uh, occurs today along the church, and we'll keep that parking, or we're proposing to keep that parking along the, the church uh, as a part of the project. And as uh, Joey mentioned, you will have some space on the south side it's the south side of the road does not have a curb so it's kind of an informal zone that could be parked on uh as need be but um where we know there's a lot of parking pressure we've tried to accommodate additional parking on the north side of the road so the next slide moves us kind of on that eastern one-way section this is from bel air essentially to County Road F. Again, very similar to the to the other. It's a th about the same footprint as the existing roadway. Fits generally nicely within that that uh, existing roadway. We have another uh, marina area down by the lake here, just before the east end of the project. Similar in, uh, similar design considerations that we'll be applying there on uh, how the trail interacts with the lake. Do we have any rest area, or does the trail meander a little bit farther from the from the roadway to create some interest there. And our last view, I think, is right up at the uh, the eastern intersection or the eastern terminus, if you will, of the project. So the trail comes up the hill towards County Road F, be on the, the east side or the right, right side here of the view. And the one way then will tee into County Road F. South of County Road F, of course, uh, County Line Road is two-way and County Road F is two-way. Wildwood Avenue is two-way. So, so Birchwood Lane, for example, residents on there, if they come to South Shore now, they'll they'll need to turn left and, and go up towards County Road F. And I know there was some discussion and, and concern about that in the winter, and we understand that, as I mentioned in our uh, earlier comments, that all things considered, we we are uh, we feel that the eastbound direction is still the best for the corridor, uh, acknowledging that that might be a little bit some a bit of a hardship in, in the winter based on what we heard from Birchwood Village, but um, the the other factors of going the other direction um, I think outweighed the, the that that winter concern expressed. Um, and I think the last uh, point I'd make here is yeah, Lake Links Trail would continue on Wildwood Avenue, I think, in the master plan. Uh, and uh, 
that's kind of how how things are progressed as they go into Washington County. So the next exhibit, Layla uh, will talk a little bit about um, our interactive map that I believe is up on the site today. So uh, yes, it is. should be should be something people can access. And Layla, could you maybe say a couple words about that? Yep. Yeah. Let me get this pulled up here. Um, so hopefully everyone can see this interactive map. So this is a another way to view the layout um, that Greg was just walking us through. So this is a, a, a way that you can view information uh, about the project, but also provide comments. So I'll just kind of do a quick um, demo here. So it does ask for you to provide an email address, but that is something that only shows up on the back end. It's not posted publicly on the map. Um, and then you can select one of the comment types and just drop a pin wherever um, you'd like to provide a comment on the project. So um, this is available on the county's website under um, this project. So um, please take a look at it um, after this meeting or on your own time later and um, explore the map and, and provide your comments. We just have a couple more slides and we'll open it up. So here's here's our project schedule. Um, we've completed a study, looked at alternatives and developed preliminary plans. And right now we're in final design. Um, we anticipate completing final design by sometime in January and having this out for um, construction starting hopefully next spring. Um, we are also in the process of starting the right away process, so that needs to be completed in the same time frame as final design. So they will be completing the process and contacting anybody who has any impacts by by sometime in January. Um, we want to thank White Bear Township, the City of White Bear Lake, and Lake Links Trail Association for advocacy related to helping us get funding and development for the project and helping us develop the project, as well as uh, Washington County. Um, so now we can move on to our question and answer se session. <laughs> yeah, you guys are right on time. Um, so I will. <laughs> Or rehearsed it or here. something. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you, everyone who has submitted comments already. We will hopefully get to all of them in the next 30 minutes here. Um, so I will, I'll just kind of read the, the first one and we'll go from there. Um, so the first question that was asked is, uh, and maybe, you know, some of these have already been addressed in the presentation, but for folks that may have missed it in the beginning, um, first question is, what problem are we trying to solve with a one way roadway? Yeah, I can. Take that as I as I mentioned. Really, the the primary problem, if you will, is impacts, limiting impacts. If we were to do a two-way roadway east of McKnight, uh, we would have some significant grading and retaining walls and and impacts to private property that we um, really would not only add significant cost to the project, but I think just be more disruptive and less less desirable. So that's really the primary driver on the the one way, frankly. All right, the next question is about the boulevard. Um, is there any plantings that will be incorporated into that or is it just grass and who will pay for the maintenance? Um, I think generally it would be grass unless unless somebody has a different answer. Um, we were trying to avoid trees in the um, boulevard because that would impact the lake view, especially in the in the in the bay areas. Um, I mean, it's it's possible something small could go in, but it has to. It uh, grass is the easiest thing because it's mowable and and traversable if you're on foot or on a bike. Greg or John, do you have a different answer? Yeah. No, I, I think that's that's right on, Joy. I would say there might be a couple areas that 
the, what the project may consider for some landscaping would be driven by T intersections. So those of you familiar with Lake Avenue, uh, you know, White Bears and some of the T intersections, there's a little bit of planting to kind of uh, do a couple of things, separate the trail users from the road and also give drivers a cue or make sure they understand there is they can't keep going straight and driving onto the trail like it is a road. So we we'll, we'll be looking at that in the final design and maybe applying that in a few select locations. Beyond that, though, as Joey said, I don't think the intention is is a landscaped boulevard. Uh, with that said, I, I would probably defer to the township and the city of White Bear Lake, who will have jurisdiction over two thirds of the corridor, the two the the one way section, and you know if they allow people to. You know, some people may take it upon themselves to plant those boulevards. I don't know if, if that might be allowed, but that's probably a city call and I'll defer maybe back to Joey or John on that. But the eastern part of this project or the, the corridor will become uh, not Ramsey County uh, roadway. It will become White Bear Lake to roughly Bel Air and then White Bear Township to the east. So they'll have some or they'll have say, if you will, over some of those types of uh, decisions as as things move forward. All right, um, this one might have been more of a comment, but I, I might rephrase this to be a question to see if this is something we want to answer. So is there a possibility that we could remove some of the boulevard to make part of the 16 foot strip for walkers um, and bikers to keep them separate? But if I, yeah, I think if I understand the question, so currently we have 16 feet, or sorry, we have six feet of boulevard, 10 feet of trail e equals 16 feet. Um, so I, I think I'm, the comment is, could that be redistributed? So there's you know, six feet for walkers maybe, or some for walkers, and then a, some kind of separation. Generally, the, the problem with that or the challenge with that from a design perspective gets into space again. So Usually the minimum sidewalk or walking path we'd like to have is six feet. Sometimes we, we could do five feet, but uh, six is a, a pretty good minimum. And a minimum bikeway, if it's just two bikes, usually would be eight feet. So when you add those two together, you get 14. And then if we had some separation, we would tend to you know want to have at least four foot of turf or something between those. So now it's at 18, uh, but that puts the sidewalk right on the curb. So then you've got snow storage issues, so it just gets to be a space problem. Uh, so that's the primary reason we aren't proposing that now. Uh, there, if we had a little bit more space and the space was flat or the right of way was flat, that could be a consideration, but it generally would add a lot of, a lot of physical space to the, to the section, which we don't have, as I mentioned earlier. I'm not quite sure if I answered that intent of the question, but ho hopefully that was kind of what uh, I was, tracking. Yes, yep, I think so. Thanks, Greg. Um, OK, next question. Will property owners be assessed for any of the road work? I believe that is no. Well, yeah. I'm um, at Joey to confirm. Um, I'm, I was thinking that we have some potential utility work that might be assessed. I'm not positive. And then um, Potentially, City of White Bear Lake, they aren't on line A, would have to confirm, said that if lighting is put in, that part of that might be assessed. Part of it would be on the city, part of it might be assessed. I'm not, but I would have to confirm with that. And Joey, if I can clarify, if people can hear me, this is John Mazzatello from Ramsey County. The county does not assess property owners for road work. Um, any of the work being proposed by the city or the township for their utilities, or there is a very, very small cost share portion that White Bear Lake is gonna be paying for this, um, for the section between White Bear and McKnight. I would contact your city and find out if they're intending on assessing or not, but the county does not assess people for road work. All right, um, the next question, um, are we, is the project team aware of large soft shell turtles that lay eggs along the north side of Snyder's Bay? I guess well, we, 
Yeah, I can I can take that. We are um, we have are aware of that short answer, and um, I think I'm sure it's come up in previous meetings. Uh, one of the reasons that we have a surmountable curve, which is kind of a more gradual curve, uh, would help turtles. Uh, you know what's good for kind of uh, accessibility in general also helps uh, turtles in this case and other other animals. But uh, so the curve that we're proposing is a relatively easy curve to 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 traverse. One of the considerations actually was the the animal consideration. There's other factors into it, but uh, what we're proposing should not uh, really shouldn't adversely affect that that activity by the turtles that's going on or has gone on for years and years, and uh, they shouldn't have a problem kind of crossing the new road, if you will. OK, the next question, um, can you explain the decision making regarding the direction chosen for the segment from McKnight Road to County Road E? I, and I think this relates to the one way. I presume it relates to the yeah the direction of the one way. And as, as I said in the presentation, we looked at a whole number of things from first responder times, times based on where the uh, fire station is to how it gets plowed um, to as, as well as uh, you know steepness of hills and where the curves are relative to the hills. All those things factored together guided us to the, the one way eastbound decision. OK, thank you, Greg. Um, as part of this project, will the county be burying the power lines? We we have been talking with um, White Bear Lake and White Bear Township, and um, at this moment we are still considering whether it will be buried. Uh, White Bear Township or White Bear Lake said that if if it is buried, part of it will be on them, and part of it may be assessed for the people who are affected. I think we were just looking at the areas of the bays, Snyder Bay and the bay at the east end. But um, we have we have preliminary costs and we're still working on coming up with a decision on that one. All right, thanks Joey. Um, all right, the next question. Will there be concrete curbs on either the north or south side of the roadway? I can, I'll take that. The, the north side of the roadway will have that continuous curb, as I mentioned, a surmountable curb, kind of fairly easy to, to traverse. Uh, there are some portions of the south side, relatively minor and short, that will have a curb. Sometimes at the intersections, there'll be a little bit of curb to wrap around the intersection. Uh, there's a couple parking bays, one by the church I mentioned today that has curb, and there'll be some curb there. I think on the west end, we might have a little stretch that we're proposing curb because there's kind of a bituminous curb there. As a rule, there isn't on the south side with some exceptions, uh, but the north will have that continuous curb to separate the trail and the roadway, provide a little extra uh, measure of safety and sense of safety for trail users. Okay, next question. Uh, will there be any truck or weight limits on the roadway? Uh, well, I can say for design, you know, we'll design the roadway for you know, regular uh, municipal traffic, if you will, for this classification of roadway, which I think is a minimum of nine ton. With that said, I don't, uh, and I'll, I'll defer to Joey or John to comment, or, and the city and the township will have it saying this too, but I don't believe there'll be a not, uh, sign to be non, no trucks, but um, that, 100% sure if that could change in the future given the jurisdictional change. Right. I was and thinking presently we we don't see any big trucks, semis, but I have uh, buses and single single unit vehicles like delivery trucks I'm sure go along there right now. Yeah, Greg, Greg is correct. Um, the intent is a nine ton per axle weight limit um, for the new roadway. 
we will do testing on the materials we're putting down that might be able to be elevated to 10 ton. Um, as far as restrictions for the traveled way, because the city and the township will be taking over jurisdiction after construction, it would really be up to them for that limitation, but as a general rule, it won't be because of weight. All right, um, next question is, is there a reason the boulevard needs to be six feet? Um, well, yes. <laughs> With that said, it, will, it probably won't always be six feet, but uh, a lot of the things that we consider when we you know, lay out roadways such as this and trail the roadway is uh, the benefit of a boulevard does a lot of things. It, it provides a space for separation from trail to roadway so that's you know a primary element but it actually does a lot of other has a lot of other functions related to just operation of the facility so as we all know we get snow in the winter here and we plow the snow so having some space between the curb and the trail allows for that snow to to be stored there as well as the the trail snow so ideally the trail snow will be plowed to the boulevard and the road snow will be plowed to the boulevard as opposed to kind of into the into the yards, if you will. Uh, so then as the snow melts, all that water will find its way to the curb and be kind of managed within the roadway drainage system. Today, as you probably know or mostly know, water goes to the two sides of the road. Sometimes that's yards, sometimes it's a ditch. Uh, it's you know it's not a not quite as organized. So it provides that it also provides room for signage. So if we have signs along the road, we, those need to be a couple of feet away from the, the road. They also need to be a couple of feet away from the trail so you don't bonk them as you're biking along. So it provides that function. Uh, City of White Bear Lake is, is considering street lighting. It's a place for the street lights to go. So there's lots of things that can go on in the boulevard. With that said, and as I mentioned earlier, there might be places where we just don't have the luxury of that space uh, well, that we'll need to to tighten up the trail to the to the curb, but wherever we do and we can provide that, it really provides a number of benefits to the to the roadway uh, and and users of the roadway. So that's why it's proposed. And it, maybe you could have already answered this in an earlier question, but is there any opportunity for homeowners to replant in the boulevard? Yeah, I think I defer that. I I that could be. I don't. Currently, or you know, as we build the project, it will be turf generally, other than maybe a couple minor exceptions. But um, I think between the city and the township, if that's allowed, then that would that would be their call going in the future. The western segment that still stays in county jurisdiction, I don't know if there's any policy on that, uh, John or Joey, relative to people that may want to do something in the boulevard. Uh, Greg, tip, typically, and I don't want to speak for either of our municipal governments, but typically because it's going to be city and township jurisdiction, that would be a discussion with them. Okay. All right, next question is, when are you expecting to start construction? I think I mentioned during the scheduling slide that construction would begin next spring in the spring of 2022. Yeah, hopefully by this time next year we'll be under construction. All right, the next question is um, how and who makes the final decision regarding having a hybrid versus a uh, full two-way configuration? I think the decision has already been made by all of the, uh, by the study and by the county and by the partners. John, do you have a different? Well, there's a very short answer to that and there's a longer answer to that. Um, the decision was made through surveying a number of stakeholders like Greg was talking about, emergency service providers, school district, mail delivery, um, the 
virtual open house held a year ago where we had a pin map similar to the one that was shown earlier here where an overwhelming majority of the commenting public chose either the one way full one way or the hybrid option um so the, the full two way was not preferred um in that meeting and as greg alluded to with right-of-way acquisition and overall cost of the project the two-way was not really a feasible um, option when we analyzed it um, the short answer would be the county it's our project we're rebuilding it and we're going to hand it off to the city and the township um, that being said i've been in this industry long enough i know nothing is absolutely final until it's actually built but what, ever, what the vast majority of the indicators have pointed to in the development of this project is the hybrid being the best solution. All right, thanks, John. Uh, the next question is, are there any anticipated changes in traffic flow and maybe specifically more traffic on County Road F? So yeah, short answer is yes. Uh, obviously with the one way that that will change um, you know, traffic flow. Generally, uh, the eastbound traffic on South Shore, assuming that remains, uh, would would take about a little half or, or so of the westbound traffic, which is half of the overall traffic, would likely use County Road F, maybe not necessarily, but that's the presumption. And some of that might turn up McKnight and come on, or some, probably the majority would utilize White Bear Avenue. You know, it's uh, possible that some people might take other routes depending on where you're living or you know where you live but uh, in the earlier studies vetted this out there was some traffic study work that was more detailed as a part of I think the 2018 work and that was all presented in that that meeting a few years ago and that's I think the the gist of that was for the most part the traffic that's distur uh, disturbed either the eastbound if it was going to be westbound or the westbound, if it's going to be eastbound, most likely it's going to gravitate to County Road F. I think uh, based on those studies, it's uh, other than, yeah, there'll be some more traffic on County Road F. There's not an uh, expectation of problems at intersections, you know, that are uh, problematic or safety issues, but uh, there will be some more, um, uh, uh, another element of traffic on County Road F that's not there today. And Greg, if I can interject on the back end of your answer, um, in anticipation of that traffic shift when South Shore becomes a one way, the county is resurfacing County Road F from McKnight to East County Line this summer. So there'll be a brand new pavement surface ready and waiting for that traffic shift to happen. All right, I can take actually this next question. So it's um, asking, will this presentation be recorded and available somewhere? And yes, it is being recorded and we will post it to the project website um, later this week. Uh, next question is, will there be any changes to the speed limits and will this differ between the two way versus the one way? I think we're still working through this question with the township and the city. Um, the narrowing of the lanes to 10 feet and 11 feet should slow the traffic down, so it will be more comfortable if you're going probably 20, 25 miles an hour, which fits in with some of the local city's changes, but um, we still need to work through that question with the city and the township. All right, thanks, Joey. Uh, next question is, um, so I currently use the crosswalk at South Shore Boulevard and Hazel Street, and more often than not, traffic does not stop when pedestrians are present. Will the new design provide any solutions for this problem? So that, that's a good question. And I mentioned in my, my talk, as we kind of walked our way through, each of those cross streets, uh, including Hazel, we're looking at, uh, and it, it probably, two or three different lights, but uh, with the intention to make those crossings as safe as possible. So one of the tools we use, and you've probably seen this around town in your travels, but at intersections now, often we'll, we'll 
bump in curbs and bring them as tight as possible to just a traveled way. So if there's a shoulder or a parking bay or something, normally uh, the curb will bump out. So the crosswalk is shortened. So that's one way to, to you know, make things safer. The other thing that strategy does is makes the pedestrian very visible to the drivers. So today, the, uh, often, and this is the case at Hazel, you're set back and there could even be parked cars or just you're, you're further back from the driver's eye uh, as you enter the street. So we'll be looking at geometrical changes that way. As we get further on into the details of the of the design, we'll also be looking at signage and striping and, and if we should have higher uh, higher end or higher level of uh, visibility on some of these crosswalks. And they, they probably won't you know all be equals, but we know uh, Hazel is probably one that's got a fair amount of traffic because it's got sidewalks you know coming up to it. Uh, McKnight, um, you know, and others that have pedestrian facilities, Bel Air, will be certainly cases where we know pedestrians will access the trail. We want people to get to the trail. So we'll be looking at it at all these intersections, even in the White Bear Township streets, which don't have sidewalks, but they do tee into the South Shore. We'll be looking at those sight lines and to the extent we can narrow up that crosswalk and get the pedestrian in the, in the eye of the driver before they have to step out into the street. That's that's our goal. So that's a part of street design we do these days that we didn't always do, you know, the first time around. So that is a, an important element in the, of the design and something that we'll be looking at at all the intersections, including Hazel. All right, next question is, are golf carts allowed to go on the bike path? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know if I've had that question before in a, in a meeting. I'm going to defer that to, to the experts <laughs> at Ramsey County. <laughs> I honestly don't know. <laughs> um, we're going to have to research that. And I see the person who asked the question is named Tony. Tony, if you want to drop Joey or I an email, we can get your contact information and get you an answer to that. Um, I know motorized internal combustion vehicles aren't allowed on trails. I don't know about electric golf carts. Maybe our, maybe our constituent cities would be able to answer that for us, but we can get an answer to that for you. All right. Um, what is the time frame? for allowing public comment on the interactive feedback map? Well, I would, I know we're going to keep it up uh, at least for a few weeks. Uh, with that said, you know, I think engagement and, and input is always welcome. I mean, we, obviously, we're in the process now, final design. So there's going to be a point where uh, change is, is limited as we get further into the summer. So we'd encourage people to access that sooner than later. Uh, I think we'd like, we'll probably do a download of it in a couple weeks, uh, but I, I think it will continue to be available and we could, uh, it's possible we might re repost another version of it or something later on as well. But uh, I don't know if John or Joey want to add to that, but our intent is to try to get your input as as soon as possible now we and we've gotten input from last year and previously and we haven't lost that so we we do still have that you're welcome to kind of make the same comments if you'd like to uh, but we would you know it's it's most helpful if you comment early and in some cases in some properties where we might have some decisions to make on grading or driveways we probably will reach out to you specifically and, and get some input in those cases but anything that you are concerned about, and I'm thinking primarily on a kind of a, a budding resident or property owner perspective, that's all good information and the more the merrier, frankly, at, at this stage of the game and just helps us kind of coalesce around the, the best design possible. And Greg, if I can interject, even after the pin map is closed for comment, anyone can always reach out to Joey or myself if there's an issue that develops or something you're concerned about. All right, great, thank you both. Um, so I'm gonna actually just 
pointed out uh, an update that um, I want to make sure we're clarifying. So on the schedule slide, um, we had to know that the timing of construction was dependent on availability of project funds. And I think that was a carryover from an earlier draft. So if there's anyone that wanted to clarify that, we can make sure that's updated before it's posted. So the, the question is, will construction be dependent on funding for the project? Essentially. Yes. I think so. yes. It's funded. The Lake Links Association and a number of um, concerned residents in cooperation with the county and the cities were able to secure a state legislative appropriation grant for construction funds. The project's funded. It's in our transportation improvement plan for 2022. And part of what I, I would add to, I talked earlier about, you know, if we went wider, things would cost more money. Part of what we did last year with the input from people was we did a, a cost estimate around the tail end of that study that that ran into the fall and that cost estimate and the available funding are synced up as John said so the project is funded if it was a two lane road with a trail all the way I don't think we'd have that money locked up in the bank so to speak um, so based on our our proposal uh, we're good to go all right thank you for clarifying that um, I guess next question here is, are there any details in the design on the east end regarding uh, making sure that there are uh, slow moving bikes or that I guess those bikes are separated from the higher speed bikes coming down the hill? Is there a wider trail here um, or is there options to lessen the grade on the east end? Yeah, uh, very good question, uh, question observation. We're looking at that because that is it's a almost a 9% grade today. So we're we're looking to see if we can adjust the trail grade a little bit, even if that's a little flatter than the road, if that makes sense. Or um, So we're, we might, anything we can do without, you know, again, encroaching or causing trouble outside the right of way, we'll try to apply there. So it's still gonna be a steep hill. There's kind of no two ways about that, but, uh, ideally, we, we've got a few tricks that we're going to try to apply from an engineering perspective to, to try to mitigate that. I'd say the jury's still outside. I don't want to promise that, but we're we're aware of it. Uh, and it's something we're looking at in the final design to see if we can make things a little safer. And that could be a little flatter. It could be a little broader curve, you know, a little larger radius. Um, it could be a little more width for separation. So all, all those things are in play. Uh, we'll just be kind of looking at the details and the ramifications of each one. Very, very insightful comment. Thank you. All right, I realize that we are we're at eight o'clock here um, and we have received a few more questions, but I think a lot of them we are are kind of similar to topics we've already discussed. Um, is there any other, I guess, last words from presenters before we wrap up tonight? Um, I think we will try to answer the questions and, and post the question and answers so people can see them. Yeah. In, a, in a written form, Joy, right? Yeah, we could do a written form, uh, something that we can post. And we'll include even things that we've answered verbally, we can kind of condense that into a narrative form. We'll, so we'll have all the questions in one uh, location. I think. Uh, as far as the recording, Layla, will that be live like tomorrow or tonight or when do we think? Um, that I, I think we have to download it and then send it to the Ramsey County um, public yeah. or the, the person that we're working with that posts things live. And she I okay. think she's out of town this week, so it might not get posted till next week. But yes, all the, the follow up from this meeting tonight will be posted on the website. If, if we don't have anything else to cover, there were 87 questions or comments posted. There were a lot of them were repetitious, so we didn't address every single one of them. But from a project development standpoint, I cannot thank the public who participated tonight enough. Um, the questions in the comments is what we need to get the final details on 
this design put together and get, get the project moving for next year's construction. So thank you very much for participating. Yes, thank you very much for giving us information that will help make this project a better project. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night.